December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. On July 26, 1945, the Allies called for the unconditional surrender of the Empire of Japan. The ultimatum stated that if Japan did not surrender, it would face prompt and utter destruction. The Japanese government ignored the ultimatum. By that summer, the Allies' Manhattan Project had successfully developed two types of atomic bombs, the uranium-based Little Boy and the plutonium-based Fat Man. The top secret mission to drop the first atomic bomb involved six B-29 bombers heading toward Hiroshima. The Enola Gay carried the bomb. The great artiste was tasked with measuring the explosion. The third, unironically called Necessary Evil, was to take photographs, while the others flew approximately an hour ahead to act as weather scouts. At 8.15 on August 6th, Hiroshima time, the Enola Gay released Little Boy. As it descended from 9.4 kilometers, it detonated 580 meters above Hiroshima, unleashing the energy equivalent of 15 kilotons of TNT. A one kiloton explosion is equivalent to detonating 1,000 tons of TNT. So this was equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT. It devastated everything within a 1.6 kilometer radius with fires spreading over 11 square kilometers, or as the Chicago Daily in 1945 put it, four square miles wiped out. The Enola Gay was 18.5 kilometers away when it felt the shock waves. Three days later, on August 9th, 1945, another B-29 named Boxcar took off from Tinian Island. This time, the primary target was Kokura, with Nagasaki as the backup. The plan was nearly identical to the Hiroshima mission. Boxcar was accompanied by other B-29s tasked for instrumentation and photographic support of the mission. At 11.01 over Nagasaki, Boxcar dropped the Fat Man bomb. It exploded 47 seconds later at an altitude of 503 meters above a tennis court in Nagasaki's industrial valley releasing the energy equivalent of 21 kilotons of TNT. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki resulted in the deaths of between 129,000 and 226,000 people, mostly civilians, marking the only time nuclear weapons have been used in armed conflict. Japan surrendered to the Allies on August 15th, just six days after the Nagasaki bombing, effectively ending World War II. These events sparked a nuclear arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union, forever changing the course of global politics. Today, the most powerful nuclear weapon in the US arsenal is the B-83, a variable yield thermonuclear gravity bomb. Its destructive capacity can be adjusted from a low kiloton range to a maximum of 1.2 megatons of TNT, which is roughly 80 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The B-83 was the first American nuclear weapon specifically designed to prevent accidental detonations, incorporating insensitive explosives in its trigger lens system for enhanced safety. This bomb is also considered for applications such as the Nuclear Bunker Buster Project, previously known as the Robust Nuclear Earth Penetrator. The non-nuclear component of the B-83 is designed to penetrate soil, rock or concrete to deliver a nuclear warhead to an underground target. The B-83's design has also been explored for potential use in asteroid impact avoidance strategies. This would involve deploying six of these warheads each set to the maximum yield of 1.2 megatons on space vehicles tasked with altering the trajectory of any near-Earth asteroids that pose a significant threat. 
effectively knocking them off course to safeguard the planet. While the B-83 is currently the most powerful nuclear weapon in the US arsenal, it was significantly outclassed by an earlier device. Castle Bravo, detonated on March 1, 1954, holds the record as the most powerful nuclear device ever set off by the United States. The footage you're seeing comes from the actual detonation at Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands, conducted under Operation Castle. The fireball generated by the explosion was over seven kilometers wide and reached temperatures hotter than the core of the sun, approximately 100 million degrees Celsius. The Castle Bravo device was encased in a cylinder weighing 10,700 kilograms and measuring 137 centimeters in diameter. It was a Cobra Deuterium Tritium gas-boosted atomic bomb developed by the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory. Upon detonation, Bravo created a fireball almost 7.2 kilometers in diameter within seconds, visible from over 400 kilometers away. The explosion carved out a crater 2,000 meters across and 76 meters deep. The mushroom cloud soared to a height of 14 kilometers and a width of 11 kilometers within a minute. It reached 40 kilometers in height and 100 kilometers in width in less than 10 minutes, expanding at speeds exceeding 580 kilometers per hour. The extensive blast contaminated over 18,000 square kilometers of the Pacific Ocean. Castle Bravo's explosion yielded 15 megatons of TNT, equivalent to 1,000 times the power of the Hiroshima bomb. The blast was so intense that it rendered the bones of nearby individuals visible through their flesh and skin. Initially anticipated to yield close to 6 megatons, the actual output of 15 megatons was far greater than expected, making Castle Bravo the sixth largest nuclear explosion in world history. The ignition of nuclear fire sparked a fierce competition for supremacy in nuclear warfare, primarily between the United States, the Soviet Union, and their respective allies during the Cold War. Prior to the first use of a nuclear weapon against Japan, Soviet scientists were already exploring the potential of nuclear arms and conducting their own research in the field. Officially, the Soviet Union was unaware of the Manhattan Project until July 24, 1945, when US President Harry Truman briefed Stalin at the Potsdam Conference. This was only eight days after the successful detonation of the first nuclear weapon. Despite their alliance during the war, the United States and Britain hesitated to share details of the Manhattan Project with the Soviets, fearing that knowledge of the project might reach German spies. Additionally, there was concern that the Soviets, as allies, would demand technical details of the weapon. Truman was initially surprised by Stalin's calm reaction when he informed him about the nuclear weapons, mistakenly thinking that Stalin might not have understood the information he was told. However, Stalin had been aware of the Manhattan Project for some time, even though the project had been so classified that Truman himself, as vice president, had not been informed about it until he ascended to the presidency. In the immediate post-war years, the United States maintained a monopoly on the specific knowledge and raw materials required for nuclear weaponry. But in secrecy, the Soviet government was working on building its own atomic weapons. This effort culminated in the detonation of the first Soviet atomic bomb on August 29, 1949. Known in the West as First Lightning, this device was more or less a copy of the Fat Man bomb. In the mid-1950s, the United States held an unchallenged superiority over the USSR in nuclear capabilities, and the Soviets lacked effective means to deliver nuclear warheads to the US, making a realistic retaliatory nuclear strike unfeasible. Acknowledging the Soviet Union's strategic disadvantage in nuclear arms, the leadership under Nikita Khrushchev felt compelled to respond to what they perceived as US nuclear blackmail. This led to the development of the Tsar Bomber. Originally, the Tsar Bomber was designed as a three-stage hydrogen bomb with a potential yield of approximately 100 megatons of TNT, roughly 6,666 times the power of the Hiroshima bomb. However, it was thought that this would have resulted in too much nuclear fallout, and the aircraft delivering the bomb 
would not have had enough time to escape the explosion. To reduce the fallout, designers replaced the uranium-238 fusion tamper of the third stage and possibly the second with a lead tamper. This modification prevented fast fission from the fusion stage neutrons, ensuring that about 97% of the bomb's total yield resulted from thermonuclear fusion alone. This made the Tsar bomber one of the cleanest nuclear bombs ever created, producing relatively minimal fallout compared to its immense yield. This was crucial as any fallout would likely affect populated areas within the Soviet Union. Nikita Khrushchev, the Communist Party's first secretary, publicly announced the upcoming test of a 50 megaton bomb during the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party on October 17, 1961. Before this formal declaration, he had casually mentioned the bomb to an American politician, leading to its premature disclosure in the New York Times on September 8, 1961. The Tupolev 95 aircraft, tasked with carrying the massive Tsar bomber, departed from Olenya airfield and set course for the USSR Ministry of Defense's state test site on Novaya Zemlya, manned by a crew of nine. Accompanying the Tu-95 was a Tupolev-16 laboratory aircraft, equipped to monitor the test. Both planes were coated with special reflective paint to reduce heat damage during the explosion. Despite these precautions, the crews of both aircraft were informed that their chances of surviving the test were only 50%. The bomb, weighing 30 tons and 2.1 meters in diameter, was so large that the aircraft had its bomb bay doors and fuselage fuel tanks removed. An 800 kilogram parachute, covering an area of 1,600 square meters, was attached to the bomb. This parachute was crucial as it allowed the bomb to slow its descent, giving the release and observation planes enough time to distance themselves about 45 kilometers from ground zero, thereby maintaining their survival odds at 50%. Two hours after takeoff, the bomb was dropped from an altitude of 10,500 meters above the Sukhoi nose test target. It detonated at 11.32 Moscow time on October 30th, 1961, at a height of 4,200 meters above Mityushika Bay. By the time of the detonation, the Tu-95 had reached a distance of 39 kilometers from the blast zone. Despite this distance, the shockwave caught up to the aircraft at 115 kilometers away, causing it to drop approximately one kilometer in altitude. Miraculously, the crew managed to regain control and safely land the aircraft. Initial estimates reported the nuclear yield of the Tsar bomber at 58.6 megatons. Despite predictions that the Tsar bomber's fireball might touch the ground, its own shockwave bounced back, preventing this from happening. The fireball, spanning eight kilometers in width, reached almost as high as the release plane's altitude and was visible nearly a thousand kilometers away. Observations were made from as far as Norway, Greenland and Alaska. The mushroom cloud soared to an astonishing height of 67 kilometers, nearly eight times the height of Mount Everest, placing it well above the stratosphere and into the mesosphere at its peak. The cloud's cap expanded to a width of 95 kilometers, while its base stretched 40 kilometers across. The blast wave circled the globe three times. The Tsar bomber remains the single most physically powerful device ever detonated on Earth, marking the most powerful nuclear bomb test and the largest human-made explosion in history. However, the Tsar bomber was never intended as a practical weapon. It was a singular demonstration designed to exert psychological pressure on the United States. By the mid-1960s, both the United States and the Soviet Union had amassed sufficient nuclear firepower to completely destroy each other. Each side developed the capability to launch a devastating retaliatory attack, even after absorbing a full initial strike, primarily through submarine-launched missiles. This capability, known as a second strike, underpinned the policy of mutual assured destruction, or MAD. This doctrine held that any nuclear attack by one side would result in the total annihilation of both the attacker and the defender. 
theoretically deterring either side from initiating conflict. It has been almost 80 years since the first nuclear detonation at the Trinity Test, and we are still living in the shadow of these mighty weapons that could very well prove to be our great filter. <laughs>